This program is brought to you by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. Coming up next on Changing Your World. Don't you sit there and just let the devil mess with you. Don't just sit there in bad circumstances like you, it ain't nothing you can do. Don't sit there like you can't do nothing. You have the very power that raised Jesus from the dead. At least open your mouth up and speak to that circumstance and say, no, 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 no. I want you to look at your life, your family, your friendships, your job, your hobbies, every single piece that makes up your life, God cares about it. And I'm on a mission to show you how to take back the victory in all those pieces, how every single piece of your life is covered under this grace. So join me July 6th through the 10th for Grace Life 2020. Register now at CreflodollarMinistries.org. And remember, no peace left behind. your problems, they will start talking to you. I said, if you don't start talking to your problems, they will start talking to you. I said, if you don't start talking to your problems, you have authority in your mouth. You have authority in your words. Don't you sit there and let cancer talk to you. Don't you sit there and let debt talk to you. Don't you sit there and let unemployment talk to you. You talk to your problems about what God has already done. Amen. All right, so now, now look what it says. He said, he says, now the implication is you heal the sick. You cleanse the lepers. All right, watch this. You raise the dead. Ah, oh, Doc, now come on, come on. Yeah, yeah we don't, because you don't believe it. Christians don't believe it. The issue today is that the believers are not believing. You raise the dead. That's deep. And when I saw that, I like, Oh, Jesus, that's you. I can't do that. You, Jesus, he said, you don't understand. I'm trying to get you to act like me and represent me. Amen. Amen. But Lord, raise the dead? Well, you don't know because you ain't never tried it. That's right. You won't know because you won't never do it. You conclude, well, it's over. You, you won't ever do it. He says, freely you have received. Freely, you have been, you, it, it's been given to you. Wow, the power has been lying dormant. My assignment today is to try to wake it up. And devils are trembling right now. They're doing everything they can. Don't believe this, don't believe this, don't believe this, don't believe this, don't believe this. And you're gonna believe this. I said, you're gonna believe this. Some of you are going to find yourselves in situations where ain't nothing available except your authority. And when you get in a position and ain't, can't nobody do nothing for you and you ain't got no, you will open your mouth up and say, now, Father, I have a right to use your power. Now, in the name of Jesus, turn this thing around. Our problem is, is we want microwave results. And if you don't see it just like that, you conclude that it doesn't work. Your faith has got to stay in the field. I got some stuff, my faith is in the field, has been out there for two years. I'm not going to call it in, though. The way you call it in, I don't see none, so it must not work. You just called it in off the field. No, you got to keep your faith out there working. Weak faith is faith that you call in out the field. Strong faith is faith that you mix stay out there and stay working. You got to keep it out there in the field. Now, look at Luke chapter 10. In verse 19, I want to speed this up just a little bit. I think you know where we're going. There are things you have to do as a believer to activate your spiritual authority. Things you have to do as a believer to activate your spiritual authority. I mean, why would Jesus say what he said in verse 1, verse 7, and 8, and then look at verse 19? 
this chapter is talking about our, our power and our ability to use it. Verse 19, read it out loud with me. Ready to read. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing. Now, you'll see the word power two times in the scripture. One time, it, the first time it's used, it's translated authority. The second time it's used, it's translated ability. You will see in this verse of scripture that you've been given authority over all of the ability of the devil. Look at this. Behold, I give unto you authority to tread. What does it mean to tread? To tread means to have absolute mastery over something. So when you have been given authority, you have mastery over every demonic force that's behind anything. And there are a lot of things that demonic forces are behind and you don't recognize it. Let me give you an illustration. You go to work and for some reason, the person at work, the boss at work just kind of is on you all the time. Uh, I want you to do something. Uh, if you are in that situation, I want you to take time and, and turn the switch on and say, now in the name of Jesus, I speak to that demon force that operates through that person against me and I command that devil to cease in his maneuvers against me in Jesus name. You'll go back to work one day and find out what happened. It was a demon force that was behind it. A lot of people just absolutely, to, I, have, I don't think I've heard any messages in the last 10 years where people have actually taught on the enemy, the demonic force. You know you got one, but you think the enemy is the person that you work with. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but we wrestle against, watch this, principalities, that, what is that, demons, powers, demons. I mean, all of this stuff is gonna be made clear you know, once you die, but you ain't dead yet. And things are changing. You've never seen weather like this before. The Bible says in Matthew, it talk, talks about the end time is going to happen similar to a woman who's given birth to a child. The labor pains will increase. It will increase. And the more, it'll get more intense and it'll become more often and more intense and become more often. And all these people who think they done got it all figured out, they're just going to be shocked. I'm not going to sit and argue with somebody on whether or not they believe there's a God or whether or not they believe there's a devil or whether or not they believe a heaven and hell. You're going to die one day. We all going to know that. That's simple. That's simple. But man, I believe. And so when I die, I'll get what I said I believe. But for those of you who just don't believe and you have bought this lie that the world's trying to push out, you're going to die too. And you're going to see. And it's going to be too late. And I ain't trying to do that. I ain't trying to die and ain't never been wherever I'm going. I want to make sure that when I close my eyes and it's over with, I have a ticket to get into the right place. Amen. Amen. Well, I just don't believe with that. I ain't no argue with you. You gonna die one day. And probably a lot quicker than God wanted you to die because all of a sudden you think you can be like God without God. All of a sudden, all of a sudden with the internet, you think you know more than God. <laughs> the internet just gave you more access to more foolish stuff to help you to, to, to go against what you, what you shouldn't go against. It's, it's, it's amazing how this world is. There's no reverence for God. Prayer is out of school, so what are you going to use to turn on young men and women's consciousness? So they can do something like hold a gun to somebody and don't have no consciousness. Why can you do that? Seems like you would have some kind of consciousness. Because it was never turned on. Mom and daddy didn't believe, so it wasn't turned on. They didn't hear about it in school, it wasn't turned on. Couldn't nobody tell them about nothing. And, and, and so you, you're walking around with raising a kid that ain't got no conscience. And he can do stuff that don't bother him, that used to bother you, because your mom and daddy and your grandmama most likely turned to consciousness. Okay, baby, that ain't right. Don't do that. Baby, don't talk to grown folks like that. Baby, show some respect. That ain't happening no more. I want them to have an opinion. And then they grow up a fool. Because there got to be somebody to turn a conscience on. And while they might not be per perfect, they got some kind of conscious because you turned something on and the school turned something on and, and society and neighbors turned something on. But when you don't have no conscience, you just go out and do whatever feels good. <laughs> I can go home now. <laughs> Well, and that's got to change. We're going to start world changers, world changers, 
world changes around the country, the world, wherever you are, the world changes nation, we are going to start using our power. And we have the power and authority to have absolute mastery over serpents and scorpions, watch this, and over all the power or the ability of the enemy. So whatever ability the enemy has, you have authority over his ability. Wow. You have authority over that ability. Wow. The devil can't do nothing in you. What was that Denzel watching the thing on there? I think it's King Kong. King, he's, he's King Kong can't. King Kong ain't got nothing on me. The devil ain't got nothing on you. Amen. <laughs> And here's what the Bible says, and nothing shall by any means, come on, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. The only thing that's going to probably get close to trying to hurt you is the fear. Most of the time, it's the fear of a thing that does more damage than the very thing itself. Fear that's tolerated will contaminate your faith. You cannot allow fear to rule in your life. You cannot wake up every day being afraid of what you can't do or what you might do or what might not happen. You cannot allow fear to ruin and to, to work in your life. Say this out loud, no fear here. No fear here. And every time it crops up, just say no fear here. You have authority, you have authority over the spirit of fear. You have a, authority to speak words and to have mastery over the spirit of fear. Don't let fear master your life. What is it that you've been afraid of? Afraid of failure? Afraid that you're not going to be what you think you can be? Afraid that you'll never recover from a mistake that you made or some stupid decision you made? What's the fear that's tormenting your life? Fear has torment. And a lot of times we walk in, in something uh, when it, it's, it's groundless fear. It's called panic. We start panicking over something that's not even happened yet. Don't allow fear to govern your life in any way. The Bible says God has not given you the spirit of fear, but of what? Power and of what? Love and of what? A, a sound mind. Say out loud, I don't have fear. I will not tolerate fear. I have mastery over fear. No fear here. No fear here. Cast that fear out. Your marriage, you're afraid that your marriage is not going to make it. You're afraid your husband's going to cheat on you. You're afraid your wife did this to you. You're afraid of, of, of this. You, what happens? You go back into self-preservation because you're so fearful. You feel like, I can't trust God, so I need to go ahead and trust myself. And, and, and press, I'm going to go into self-preservation, and I'll preserve myself. That's the worst thing you can do. Fear is, fear, that's, <laughs> that's the topic of today's society, isn't it? People operating by fear. So afraid that they can't have, so they'll go and rob somebody else. That's fear base. It's fear base. And we've got to conquer fear. And I am telling you today that you have authority over the spirit of fear. Say that out loud. I have authority, I have authority. Over, the over the spirit of fear. All right, now let's look at John chapter 15 and verse uh, 5. John 15 and 5. I have authority over the spirit of fear. I have authority over spirit of fear. I have authority over negative thoughts. I have authority over negative thoughts. You don't control thoughts with thoughts. Amen? Amen. You control thoughts with words. You don't control thoughts with thoughts. People think you're crazy sitting up there. Mm, 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 mm. No. <laughs> you have a stupid thought you pull it down with the Word of God. You have this thought, you know, you're going to be dead real soon. You open your mouth up. I shall live and not die, for greater is he that is in me than he is in What happens? You cast that thought down. You don't, you don't cast thoughts down with thoughts. You cast thoughts down with the Word. Now look at John 15 and 5. Now check this out. He said, I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. Now notice God says, I am the vine, I'm the root from which all this life is going to come from. But then he says, you and I, we're branches. I'm a branch. Now the fruit comes out of what? The branch. He says, I'm the vine, I supply the ability. You're the branch, you flip the switch and give forth the fruit. You're the branch, you're not the vine. You ain't never going to be the vine. You're the branch. The vine supplies the power. 
the branch gives birth to the manifestation of the fruit. Glory be to God. You're a branch. Your job is to give, give, give birth to the manifestation of the fruit. Quit going to God and asking God to do what you have been assigned to do. Your job is to manifest the fruit. Hebrews 13 and 5. Let's go there real quick. He says in verse 5, let your conversation or your lifestyle be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have them. For he said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. I'll never leave thee nor forsake thee. Now, you cannot bear forth manifestation alone. But when you're born again, you're never going to be alone. You're never going to be a branch without a vine. A branch without a vine dies. You're never going to be a branch without a vine. Look at this in the Amplified, verse 5. You will never be alone. I don't care if you feel alone, you will never be alone. You will never be alone. Watch what he says in the uh, Amplified Bible. When, when you're never alone, you never have to wonder where is God. And there may be times in your life after you've, you know, things have happened that you feel alone, but you're never going to be by yourself, not another day as long as you live. Now, Hebrews 13, 5, Amplified. Ready? Let your character or moral disposition be free from the love of money. Now, the love of money, when somebody operates in the love of money, the love of money is when you trust God, trust money more than you trust God. If you find yourself trusting money more than you trust God, that means you rely on money's ability to do for you more than you rely on God's ability to do for you. So when you go to money and it can't do it, then you just stuck because you trust money more than you trust God. That's the kind of society we're living in. It's a mammon-driven society. He says, now, let your character or moral disposition be free from the love of money, including greed, avarice, lust, and craving for earthly possessions, and be satisfied with your present circumstances and with what you have. Why? For he, God himself, has said, for he, God himself, has said, I will not in any way fail you nor give you up nor leave you without support. I will not, I will not, whew, I will not in any degree leave you helpless, nor forsake you, nor let you down, nor relax my hold on you. Assuredly not. I guess it's safe for us to say, God ain't going nowhere. Well, I don't feel like he's with me. No, you got to know that he's with you. Amen? Now, let's look at Ephesians chapter 1, 19 through 20, but let's look at it in the New Living Translation. Ephesians uh, chapter 1, 19 and 20. Now, the awesome thing about this scripture is that it's, it's telling you that you have the same power that raised Jesus from the dead. Yes. You have the same power that raised Jesus from the dead. Verse 19, I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us. The God's power for us. It's his power, but it's for us who believe him. How many of you believe him? He says, this power that's for us is the same mighty power, the same power that did what? Verse 20, it's the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand in heavenly, in heavenly realms. Now, hear what he's just said. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead is the same power that he's made available to us. So you don't have some crackerjack power. You got the same power that raised Jesus from the pit of hell. And you walking around here scared and putting up with 
something? Wait, wait, and notice he says, this is for those who believe. I believe it. I believe it. I believe that I have the same power that Jesus, that raised Jesus from the dead. I believe it. That's first base. You start right there. I believe this. I believe this. The believers have not been believing this. I believe that I have this God-given authority and power. I have it. You got to start working on that. You got to get up every day. I believe I have this power from God that raised Jesus from the dead. What's going to happen the day you really start believing that? There's a lot of things going to change in your life when you're walking around here. I mean, the devil has no defense against a tongue-talking, blood of Jesus pleading, believer of grace. What can he do to you? Things, things happen, and, and, and you open your mouth. You're like, all right, don't let me, don't let me, don't let me flip the switch, boy. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to tell you, don't you sit there and just let the devil mess with you. Don't just sit there in bad circumstances like you, it ain't nothing you can do. Don't sit there like you can't do nothing. You have the very power that raised Jesus from the dead. At least open your mouth up and speak to that circumstance and say, no, 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 no. James chapter 4 and 7. That's what today is about. I'm going to show you a scripture, shout it about a little bit, get it in there. After a while, your, your unbelief will start weakening. Your unbelief will say, well, wait a minute, I keep seeing all these scriptures. Maybe it's something to this. Maybe it's something I need to pay more attention to. Look what he said in verse 7. Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil. All right, all right, now notice, notice this is, resist is something you have to do. Now, it's amazing to me. He says, resist the devil. So, obviously, there's a devil to be resisting. <laughs> resist the devil. That word resist means to, to withstand, to fight against. It means to actively fight against. That means if something's going on, it's like, all right, devil, let's do it. Let's, I'm, 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 I'm resisting you, and I may have to do that every five minutes until you understand I'm not playing. Amen. When I was diagnosed with an aggressive form of, of cancer, I... I, the day I found out about it, I just, I had to just kind of keep my mouth closed and govern my response. I could not afford to just let something, anything come out of my mouth. Like, oh, I'm going to die. You can't do that. I had to get a revelation of shut up, and I had to think, now I got to respond properly because your first response might be the first sperm that reaches the egg to cause the response. I said, in Jesus' name, I'm healed, and I will live and not die. First response. Amen. Okay. Now, all kinds of stuff going through my head. I think about all the people that died of this, this, this form. I, I, I think of, you know, oh, Jesus, this. The sky started looking different. And every time I pass a graveyard, I break out in a sweat. I'd be up there teaching. I, I went through all this. Y'all didn't even know what was going on. Every time you saw, saw the word dead <laughs> or death, I'd break out in a sweat. And the Bible says dead. Oh, it got dead. The devil said, yeah, that's going to be you. That's going to be you. Now I had to actively resist him. I will live and not die. I would take communion every day. I just took the, 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 the body, devil. Hey, I just took the cup, devil. I'm going to live and not die. I will not die. I will live and not die. I'm already the healed. I'm not even trying to get healed, devil. I'm already the healed. I'm the healed protecting my health, devil. And he could come. See, every time he come with something, I come back with something else. So I got these healing scriptures. So every time he say something, then I'd get them out and i start reading, just walking up now, hallway, just reading these healing scriptures. Just, what, what, what am I doing? Just reading these healing scriptures. What is he doing that for? I am actively resisting the devil. I am letting him know, no, 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 no. Your words would not weigh in heavier than my words. And I realized that cancer is working 24 hours to try to kill me. So I had to get something that will be working and even while I was sleeping. So while my, while my brain was cut off, my spirit was still receiving it, and I'd play healing scriptures all night long. And then when, the, when I'd wake up, I'd hit stop, and then I'd take over, praise God, do a live thing on it. And I would resist the devil, and I would resist, and eventually, guess what happens? He's got to go. He cannot hang around and get his head beat up like that. Once he realizes that you're not going to buy in on the fear, 
Satan leaveth thee. Satan is a defeated foe. It's time we walk in the authority. I want you to look at your life, your family, your friendships, your job, your hobbies, every single piece that makes up your life, God cares about it. Not just your Sunday morning life. He came that every piece would be good, that every single piece would be covered with his love, with his favor. That's what it's all about. It's about you understanding that he's involved in every piece. Yes, he gave you salvation, but this life, this grace life, it's about the whole thing. It's about your flourishing in every piece of your life. Not just on Sunday morning, because he's not just a Sunday morning kind of God. And I'm on a mission to show you how to take back the victory in all those pieces. How every single piece of your life is covered under this grace. So join me July 6th through the 10th for Grace Life 2020. Register now at CreflodollarMinistries.org. And remember, no peace left behind. Jesus instructed us to take this gospel to the uttermost parts of the earth. With the seeds you sow into Creflo Dollar Ministries, we extend this good news of grace to people on every single continent. They are empowered to see real change in their lives. That's exactly what you do when you send in your financial donations to support our outreach endeavors. You empower change in people's lives. And for that, we say thank you. And God bless you. I'll see you next time right here on Changing Your World. If you want to honor the Lord by sowing financial seeds into Creflo Dollar Ministries, call the number on your screen or log on to CreflodollarMinistries.org. Creflo and Taffy Dollar love connecting with you. And here at World Changers, we understand the importance of using technology to do just that. We're constantly working to bring the gospel of Christ to thousands of viewers and followers around the world, and we want you to get involved. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. We want to make the word of grace available throughout every voice of social media. Because of you, Creflo Dollar Ministries is providing a new understanding of grace and empowering change in the lives of millions of people every day. Thank you, partners and friends. Your love and financial support makes it possible to bring this message into millions of homes all across the globe.